you know, when they're like, no, Savenya, Baba he, Sheba boy. Like, who knows if that's really what they're saying, but everyone knows that's the Circle of Life song. Go for it. <laughs> okay. So, tonight we're going to be discussing Lion King. <laughs> no, okay. Okay, so The Lion King is like a classic. It's one of my favorite movies. And basically what happens in the beginning is that like there is this lion, right? And it's a baby lion. And <laughs> the name of the baby lion is Simba, but you don't know that yet. So then these these mommy and the daddy lion, they lift it up and they're like, no, Stefania, Bohi, Shiba Ho, Jinama, Simyama. I don't know if those are the right words because no one ever knows what the words are, but that's what happens. And then, oh, oh no, I was wrong, it's Rafiki. Rafiki holds up the lion. <sighs> okay, so Rafiki holds up the lion. Rafiki's like this cool monkey, you know, and you're like, ah, Rafiki is like my grandpa, but he's great. So anyway, so he holds up Simba and he's like, no, Savannah. And then you have like a proud mommy and the proud daddy, and they're all next to you. And then, um, you know, TBH, like, I don't remember what the mom and dad's name are. Mufasa. Because I don't think they really go into it. Mufasa, Mufasa, Mufasa. <laughs> but you know Simba. Like, you know Simba's the name of the... <laughs> Do not like that I said that. I'm surprised you don't know the dad's name. Shut up. It's fine. <laughs> Do I need to know the dad's name? Do you want to feed that to me? All right, cool. So, um, it's my interpretation of the movie. Whatever. It doesn't matter what you think. I think it's great. Anyway. Okay. So, um, so then Simba's growing up, right? And he's like super cool. And he's like this cute little lion. And he's growing up. And, you know, you kind of watch. He has this little bird, Zazu. And Zazu is like his, um his like little mentor dude that like sits on his shoulder maybe it's an allusion to like the angel and the devil that sit on your shoulder quote unquote I don't know but like Zazu's this like cute little bird so um so then he's he's Zazu's always like no don't do that like you shouldn't do that because because you're a prince and <laughs> okay so anyway so Simba makes this really cool friend, Nala. And Nala's like this gorgeous, beautiful lion. But she's also, she's a lioness, actually. Because she's like a powerful woman. So you have Simba and Nala. And they're best friends. And then they go to this like crazy place where they shouldn't be going. And they know they shouldn't be going there. But it's like this, um, oh. I forget what it's called, but it's like this this place of the bones, basically. And like, I just have this specific picture in my mind of like these bones that look like ribs, and they're like this. But they go and and then they're like, oh my god, like this is so dangerous. But they love being there because they're definitely exploring. But meanwhile, uh, Zazu has already warned Simba about going out. He's like Simba, you know, he's he's on his shoulder and he's barking. He's like Simba. You, you know, you shouldn't be doing this. Like, you're not being good prince. I should turn my sound off. Um, and Simba's like, nah, fuck you. Fuck you, Zazu. I want to be king. And he's, so he sings like, <laughs> I just can't wait to be king. And he's like telling Zazu how he really feels. So then him and all are at this place. And while they're at this place, there's a stampede. And like, you you know that the stampede is coming and like you're really concerned because like Nala and Simba are gone but the stampede is coming and then Scar who is the villain of the film he's like he's like the ugly duckling brother that no one gave enough attention to so he's like very twisted inside and he pushes his brother who's the king lion that I can't remember his name of. Mufasa. He pushes him off the cliff into the stampede. And then while Nala and Simba are gone, 
he dies. So then it's so sad and Simba is just like, oh my God, I'm so sad because my dad died. And like, that's a really sad thing. Disney always like, Disney did not want people to have two parents. He was like, nah, bitch, nah, bitch. You gotta only have one parent because otherwise you're not fucked up enough to be in a Disney movie. <laughs> so then he comes back and he finds out that Scar's king and like everybody hates Scar because Scar's like that sleazy guy, you know? He's like, he's like that sleazy guy in the bar that's like, what are you doing tonight? Like, I wanna buy you a drink. And you're like, nah, you're gross. Like, I don't want you to buy me a drink. And he's like, well, I'm gonna buy you a drink anyway because I'm a sleazy dude in a bar. That's what I think of Scar. And he has these hyenas. These hyenas who are like his wingmen and they're just like creeping around, like, you know, making sure that everything is like exactly how Scar wants it. And um, so then... Simba's like, oh my god, my dad dies. I'm so sad. So then he goes away and and um, he meets Timon and Pumbaa. And then Timon and Pumbaa are just like the best characters in this film. Except Rafiki. Because Rafiki's actually really dope. He's my maybe my favorite character. But so he meets Timon and Pumbaa. And Timon is like this little... Like it's so hard to describe these animals because... You're kind of like, I don't see these animals in my normal life. Like, and I never am I meeting like this like really fat warthog pig and this like little prairie dog, you know? It's like not a common thing. But anyway, regardless, he, um, so then you have Timon and Puba, and Simba meets Timon and Puba, and they kind of like take him under his wing. They take him under his wing and then like, you know, they teach him how to like grow up in the wild because he ran away from his home. And they have the song. My favorite part about this song is like they it, about Timon and Pumba and Simba's relationship is the song where they're walking across the logs and it's like Hakuna Matata, you know, of course. The, the, the typical song but the time I always think of is like they're walking across the log and like you just see them growing and you're just like oh my god this montage is so real so it's like they're just walking across the log and they're just like um Hakuna Matata Hakuna Matata Hakuna Matata Hakuna Matata and then you see them getting older and older and it's really cool and then what happens is that Nala so now, probably like 10 years have passed, right? So it's been, maybe that's an exaggeration, but like 10 years of uh, a little baby lion, Simba. Simba is hanging out with Timon and Pumbaa for those 10 years and he's learning from them. And then um, Nala comes back because, oh my gosh, the kingdom is in trouble. And it's like, Scar is ruining everything and it's so upsetting so Nala is like because Nala talks to Simba's mom who's still alive and she's like Nala you gotta get Simba back like this is not okay that he's away he's supposed to be the king he has to fight Scar who's ruining all of our lives and Nala's like okay I'm gonna go find Simba so then Nala she travels out and she finds Simba and then she finds him with Timon and Pumbaa. And then Simba's like, who are you? And Nala's like, who are you? And then they're both like, oh my God, we know each other. And so then they're like, oh wait, we were best friends. Like, I can't believe that you're Nala and you're Simba. And then they become best friends again. And then Timon and Pumbaa feel very excluded from their relationship. So then they sing, can you feel the love tonight? The peace the evening brings. And then they cry at the end because they're so sad that they're going to lose Sim Simba to, <laughs> to Nala. And they're just really upset about it. So then Nala convinces Simba that it's really important that he goes back to 
his little country where he's from. I think it's probably the same country, but um, his little part of town where he's from. <laughs> but also, before that happens, Simba goes to, um, he goes out and he sees Rafiki again. And then he's like in this like vast area where it's just like, there's not really any hills. It's just a very flat area. And he just looks up at the stars and he like sees his dad and he's like, oh my God. And he has a conversation with his father who he thinks lives in the stars because his father's like up in heaven. And then his bit, his dad is like, Simba, it's your responsibility. You need to take care of the land and like you need to rule the world or the earth or whatever. So then Simba's like, you know, he's more mature at this time. He's gone through his like prepubescent period. He's decided he's gonna take on this role of being king. So then he goes back and like he sees all the horrible things Scar has done. And then Scar has that like song with the hyenas, you know, and he's like, um, oh my god, how does the song go? How does the song go? Be prepared. Yes! He sings, be prepared. He's like, be prepared, be very prepared. And then, um, and so they're like ready for this fight. Like they're like gearing up for this fight. And then Simba comes back and he just like, you know, him and Scar fight. And it's like crazy and you're like, who's gonna win? Who's gonna win? And it's him and Scar and they're, you know, going at it. And then Simba comes through. Simba comes through and he just like knocks Scar off of the mountain ledge. It's not really a mountain. It's like if the Grand Canyon, if you were on the Grand Canyon and like you knock someone off the ledge, you wouldn't be like, I knock someone off a mountain ledge. You'd be like, I knock them off this canyon ledge. And so Scar basically has the same death as Simba's father. So it's like, boom, like foreshadowing, but also just like crazy. And then you're like, ah, Simba got Scar back for killing his dad. And it's like, great. And then, and then Simba and Nala, get married and they have kids and they live happily ever after and there's my man my man Rafiki and he blesses Simba and Nala's kids when he holds them up and I feel like there's a lot of songs I didn't cover but one of the most it's like just timeless timeless music and it's so good and like even though no one knows what they're really saying in the circle of life like, and, and let me tell you, I've done my share of, like, middle school musicals, like, where I've sung sheet music from The Lion King, and, like, even though I read those syllables on the, on the letter, uh, on the page, it's still, like, those may or may not be the syllables that they're singing in that song. So, um, yeah. I also, I just think it's a really timeless film. I think it's like, you know, the best thing about Disney movies is that they are so timeless. Like, I know that eventually one day I'll be able to show my kids, like, can't show them this, but like, we'll definitely show them The Lion King. Basically, I think The Lion King is like a film that will go, it will be relevant forever um, because it's like, a really important movie to children and it's a really important movie to adults because it affected them as children right now uh his father's name is mufasa mufasa how did i forget mufasa's name <laughs> Whoa, I think this is like, this is stronger than like real tequila. This is like real, real tequila because I can't remember Mufasa and Mufasa's like the most, like the, the most incredible slash like memorable name and I just forgot it. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean like Simba's a good looking lion Let's be real about this. Like, Simba is an attractive lion. Like, you look at Simba and you're like, ah, okay, you're attractive. But Mufasa, though? Like, Mufasa's like, damn. 
Okay. Okay, Mufasa. I see you. I see you, Mufasa.